Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to D Backs Dispatch with your three fellas, Brandon, Brett, and Gabe, here for another lovely episode. Uh, today, as you can see, we're going over arbitration. Uh, Diamondbacks did uh, sign a couple of players there, they did reach in in agreement on arbitration. So if this is your first time on the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content. Uh, we have several videos on the channel. Make sure to go ahead and check those out. We do have a couple of shorts as well. If you just want to kind of see some things that we've uh, talked about, make sure to uh, check those out. Um, but to go over a little bit more as to how arbitration works, Gabe, take it away. All right, so this is really like the only sport in professional sports in America where we have an arbitration process because usually players sign a contract when they're rookies and so they get their money right away. The way baseball works is the first three years, you you get the minimum. It's about 700000 now, and you get that for about three years until you reach what's called the arbitration uh, process. So the way it works is you literally have, if you get a certain amount of money, it's like it goes by, you know, comparing what another guy gets. So like, let's say if you're a pitcher, they compare to what other pitchers who, you know, have the similar numbers as you, they base it off of that. So it's like, oh, you know, this guy made 15 million this time. So you're projected to get about 15 million. And as a player, you want those 15 million or even a little bit more. But as a team, they feel like, oh, well, he's not worth 15. He's worth 10. And usually, most of the time, they can come to an agreement and say, okay, let's just put it down the middle, 12 and a half, 13 million, and then everything is fine. But every once in a while, you get a team that just doesn't want to pay an extra 11,000 or something like that. And so then they go into a process called arbitration. And in arbitration, uh, the player... And the team, they literally have their representatives and themselves go into like a court session with arbiters who are there to judge whether or not the player deserves that money. And you get a lot of bad blood during that process because the team will say and do anything uh, to discredit you and your team as to why you deserve that money. So we've seen like with Corbin Burns, they blamed him for not doing good in the playoffs or something for their losses. They can get really, really nasty and really awful and that's why a lot of uh that's why a lot of people just say like okay i'll just take whatever money and like i don't care like i don't want to go through that process and the teams don't want to go through that process because it creates bad blood um apparently this may have been one of the reasons why um Chris bryant didn't want to stay with the cubs because of the arbitration because they said some nasty things about him so nobody wants to go through arbitration it's an awful process but Sometimes guys just want to go through it. And luckily, at least with the Diamondbacks, with Gallon, Walker, and all these other guys, they, were, they didn't have to go through it. So, But, yeah, that's about it, uh, about the process. Yeah, uh, arbitration is, a, uh, like you said, baseball is the only professional sport that really does it. You see it a lot in, like, normal jobs. Uh, you'll see, basically, like you said, team puts down one number, player puts down another number and we kind of see what happens from there. So uh, we did have a couple of players that agreed to one year deals to avoid arbitration. So we had Zach Allen, Christian Walker, Kevin Ginkle, Paul Seawold, Ryan Thompson, and Joe Mantiply. So it was very, it was, it was good that uh, these guys, basically the back end of our bullpen, our best starting pitcher, and the leader in our clubhouse agree to these one-year deals to avoid arbitration. So first, we're going to start discussing Zach Gallen. Uh, so according to MLBTradeRumors.com, Zach Gallen, who has just over four years of service time, uh, his projected amount was $10.9 million. Um, and Zach Gallen actually agreed to just over $10 million. So... Um, Pretty close uh, to what I personally feel he's worth. Um, had he not kind of shat the bed the last two months of the year, I definitely can see that number is higher. Um, Zach Gallon really struggled in the postseason. 
Uh, Zach Gallon was not the reason that the Dimebacks made the World Series. Um, so that was definitely a struggle. And we saw the deal that Yamamoto got, and we're, like, and we're all thinking, what does Zach Gallon now get? Um, but we have to wait another year for that as they just sign this uh, one-year deal. Uh, so, Brett, thoughts on Zach Gallon avoiding arbitration? I mean, one, uh, personally, it's a little surprising. Uh, I honestly fully expected them to go to arbitration with him being a Scott Boris uh, client. Um, so it was a very, you know, welcome surprise. Uh, plus the fact that we got him for, I think, like you said, a little bit under projected. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, struggled a little bit down the last end of the season, uh, beginning of the postseason. Really nice game in game five of the World Series, though, it's, you know. So not forget that one, you know, that was, mm. but I think it's honestly really, uh, it's really good to see like every single one of them avoiding arbitration shows like they want to, like, they want to get all of this done out of the way. They want to get back to focused on, you know, winning, like, you know, getting focused on the next season. Like they're all here, like focused on the same goal. It's just really good to see, honestly. Yeah. Uh, it, it was one start in game five, but the big one for me that he struggled with was the NLCS. There were two games that he should have won, but he just he didn't pitch well. So that was a disappointment to me. Gabe, thoughts on Zach Gallon signing that one year deal to avoid arbitration? Yeah, I'm glad that it didn't get nasty or anything. Like as Brett said, I thought I was going to go into arbitration just because he's a Scott Boris client. But just the fact that they were able to work it out and seem like he was ready to go, just like they gave him a number, he said, "Cool, I'll get it." And then, you know, he had an extra 11000 for that new Sanderson Ford truck or whatever that he got on his Instagram. Like, you know, he needed a little extra 11000 And I'm glad the team was able to pay because, like I said, like that Corbin Burns, I think it was like a 1000 or something like that the, where they disagreed on. Then they took him to arbitration. Like, yeah, the D-backs teams... also didn't seem like they were, you know, playing around either. They're like, whatever, just say what you want, give you it. The players are like, all right, here's my number. Here he goes. And then. Quick, yeah, easy, most teams no seem issues. to disagree with players over like, and it's not even like, you know, a lot. Uh, oh, the player wants lot. ten million, and the or the 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 team wants to give him, you know, Zach Gallon ten million, and Zach Gallon comes back with like fifteen. Like it's not usually like a big difference like that. It's usually like the team's like, hey, we want to give you like, or the players like, hey, we want like eleven, and they're like, we'll give you. 10 point like seven like they're gonna like or like not even that they're like we'll give you you know twenty five thousand less you know than what you're asking for and it's like why are you being like that nitpicky for especially you know the corbin burns situation like one of your aces like you, you don't want to piss them off and like you can piss somebody off very easily when it comes to you know money that's just how life is so yeah it's it get like w w the main one this past year uh, that I could see is going to end up being really bad is the Marlins and Luis Arias. They are not close on the amounts whatsoever. I believe it's like 500K. So in terms of arbitration, that's a lot. Like normally, like Brett said, they're not off by that much. It's usually like 1K or like under 1K is usually how much they're usually off by. Um, and then after this, Marlon said, anyone on their roster is up for trades. Um, so I miss that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's not. Is good. that why I saw uh, a bunch of people that were like, go get jazz, go get this guy, go get this guy. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. because they basically and then there's the uh, rumor right now that the Marlins and Padres are working on a deal. Uh, Hassan Kim and um, for like. And some other prospects for Luis okay. Arias oh. um, and um, Jesus Lizardo. That'd be kind of scary. Because, yeah, I was like, "Wow, arbitration gets it gets ugly. It gets nasty." Yeah. Um, Zach Allen really, if you look back at his numbers, he's really only done anything the last two years. He's been amazing the last two years, so I hope he continues to project up um as he has been but i think 10 million solid number um so moving on to our next notable guy that avoid avoided our arbitration the leader in the clubhouse christian walker 
His projected number uh, with just over five years of service time was $12.7 million. His actual amount, as we see here, was only 10.9, so not even close. And I love this tidbit. Before this season, he his contracted earnings was 10.8 million. So he surpassed. He's getting paid this year more than he's had his entire career. I think that is a great story. He fought through the minors. He was stuck behind Paul Goldschmidt here. And then we traded him to the Cardinals. Yes, that trade was absolutely awful, but it did give us to see what Christian Walker can really, really do. Christian Walker has had a phenomenal past two seasons. He literally played almost every game. Um, he played 160 in 2022, 157 in 2023, has gotten a gold glove in back-to-back -back seasons. Um, he got MVP. MVP votes this past season, which I think is quite uh, comical. Um, but he didn't start playing full time until 2019. So it's definitely uh, been a struggle for him. Um, but good to see Christian Walker uh, sign that one year deal. Brett, your thoughts? Um, honestly, just kind of echoing the same thing uh, you said, and like our man Josh put in the graphic the fact that he's making this year more than he's made in his entire career is like just good to hear. I mean, he came into the league in 2014 with Baltimore as a rookie, six games under 20 plate appearances, 2015, seven games under 12 plate appearances. Uh, 16, I believe, is when they let him go. Dan Max picked him up. He was in the minors. Uh, 17, like you said, he was stuck behind Paul Goldschmidt, so he still only got 11 games. So 2018, he was still technically a rookie, and, you know, most guys aren't making that much money. Like, they're like I think what the average salary for most uh, – Ball players with what like seven hundred thousand. So for like ball player money, that's kind of low, and that's like maybe if you're like a league average player. I'm not sure about like rookies and deals like that, but uh, it's just it's it's really good for him. And then like you said, his consistency just had a really good last two seasons, uh, 2022 and 2023. Uh, hit 30 plus home runs. This is the first year he eclipsed uh, 103 RBIs. He had 11 stolen bases, which that was kind of uh, surprising. I don't know if that was maybe just because of the new rules or just he, uh, you know, Dave McKay magic, but he's just been really consistent. And one of the, the guys that even in the dark times in like 2021, like, you know, the little glimmer of hopes where you're like, you know, there's something here to, to build around. And it's good to see the Dimebacks kind of award him with his consistency and with like um, his loyalty to the team and just how like he loves his place. Like he's such a chill dude, met him uh, for a signing and he was just the most humble guy ever. So I have nothing um, but good things to say about this. I'm very happy for Seawalk and I hope that he continues next year and has a very similar year than what he did in 2023. Yeah, I agree. I agree with the what you guys said about him. And it's not just that he got stuck behind Paul Goldschmidt. He got stuck behind Chris Davis, too, in, in Baltimore. So I'm like, this is a guy who spent years in the minors, you know, grinding his way, and finally he was able to get a chance to go to the majors. And, you know, I'm glad he's able to make his money again because, yeah, $10.8 million, you know, being um, – this is, what, his second arbitration, right? No, his last one. Or second, second yeah, one, I think. I think. Second or, he has uh, one more, and then he would be a free agent. But yeah, it, like it's really cool. Like I really like Walker. He's a two-time Gold Glover. He gets thirty bombs a season. Especially when you're talking about like who we lost at the time. You know, face of the franchise, future, future Hall of Famer Paul Goldschmidt. At least for that one year, we gave him up. They had almost the exact same numbers, and if anything, Walker had better defense than Goldie. So at the, at the time, we were like, oh, well, maybe we just didn't lose too much. Um, but then Goldschmidt went out and won, you know, an MVP. But it's like, you know, these are two different guys. Like, one had the expectations on him and the other one didn't. And, you know, I'm glad to see him get his money. He's almost, what, $11 billion. And I just want to say that, like, this is why you sign these guys to extensions because – we were looking at Walker and Gallon. They were both hovering around 10 to 11 million. Imagine Corbin Carroll once he hit arbitration. You're talking 15, 20, 25 million. Especially if we go based off of like Juan Soto, who got 31 million. 
in arbitration. Yep. Like uh, uh, set the uh, record because the record last over year, Otani uh, was a thirty a million uh, last year. Yeah, so like you, the D backs could have ended up sp- spending probably more than those one hundred ten million they paid Carroll just in arbitration. And then, you know, at least they know how much they're spending, too, because when you enter arbitration, it's like you don't know how much the player wants. You don't know how much is that going to end up be. And, like, you're talking about the Marlins, too, just the fact that Arias, you know, they're they're off by their numbers by not even, you know, a whole lot. And then they're like, all right, we're listening to offers. Like, th- this is why you do this, and I'm glad to see him um, just sign. Like, it all se- I mean, obviously, we're not there, but it just seems like it was all quick and easy. Everyone gave their numbers and the team gave their numbers and yeah, they just came to an agreement. No, no fuss about it. Yeah. Uh, So I think the, I think these two were huge to be able to avoid arbitration um, because it's, it, it could have gotten so ugly, so ugly if we had to go to arbitration with anyone, but with these two, um, and like Brett said, the fact that Zach Gallen didn't go to arbitration as a Scott Boris client, I think is a huge win. Like uh, we have to take that, take that win. So, um, maybe it's a sign so I, that he extension for some reason, who knows? I don't know. He loves his place. It seems like he's, I, I don't know. Maybe he's the one Boris agent that'll break the chain. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to go quite that far. Um, but uh, so we, uh, like I said, there's a couple of other guys that we did. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull up the numbers, but, uh, the computer's not working. Uh, so Paul Seawald, um, avoided, uh, his projected was 7.3 million. Um, huge, uh, because we, we saw last year how this bullpen was when we didn't have a closer we get paul seawald and everyone got their roles and we saw what happened we literally had the best bullpen the last two months of the year which you would have asked me that in june i'd say uh are you high because there's absolutely (laughs) no way that our bullpen would have been the best unit on our team never i never would have believed that in a million years just because the amount of blown saves of games that we had those first couple of months, I was like, that's going to be the reason that we don't make the playoffs. And it almost cost us because we we barely got in. Um, so it's very, very exciting. Uh, we'll get uh, Paul uh, Seawald here. And to see, to see what this bullpen could be for a full season has me excited. Um we got Ryan Thompson, Joe Mantiply, and Kevin Ginko. These are all guys that uh, they all had pretty low uh, projected um, numbers, all just over one million. Um, so, which is crazy to me, just compared to seeing what some of the like high end guys are getting paid, and then you see guys like this that get paid just like one million. You're just like, that's that's how you can afford to go out and get these guys that have that get paid 10, 12, 15 million a year when you have like your entire bullpen, each guy's like only a million or like 500 K. Like that's how that that's how it works is you got to have guys that are willing to. Yeah, I don't need a lot. I just need just just a little bit. So i um, very excited that literally the back end of our bullpen we all we got i guess you could say re-signed um for all these one-year deals um and i think that's going to be a big factor is to see how far this team can go because bullpen can make or break your season so brett your thoughts on the rest of the group um i mean i think it's just well deserved for just all the guys at least get a you know deal uh secured for next year it's nice that they at least get a decent amount of money but it makes me kind of laugh that our entire bullpen is going to be cheaper than the one year josh Hader is going to be worth in every year of his deal because what seven million for seawald ginkle so under like i finally pulled up 
Uh, Paul's is literally right where the projected was, was seven points. No, 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 like, I know, he, but, like, I'm just saying, like, if you add all of the bullpen, like, together, I'm pretty sure our entire bullpen is going to be, like, less than, you know, one Josh Hader a year of him. Like, half. like, maybe even half, yeah. So, it's, like you said, it's kind of the way you have to compete when you're, like, D-backs aren't, like, I'd say a small, or Arizona's not a small market, but we're not, like, the Dodgers, we're not, like, these other teams, we're not the Yankees, can't just throw money around willy-nilly. So, these are kind of what you have to do to compete um and you know stay relevant like you said the main reason why we even got where we were is because of the bullpen like the offense the inconsistency uh we obviously saw like they'd be hot they'd be cold but the one thing that was always there ever since the Paul Seawall trade was like tea time ginkle throwing the stinky Seawald like it didn't it didn't matter and then obviously bringing up Saul Frank he was like a really nice lefty addition um so it was just it's just the things you kind of got to do to to compete, and they they picked the pieces properly, which was really nice. Like you know, we've seen in years past, like the Melansons and the Ian Kennedys and the other ones, where we're like, "Hey, we know going into this, like, yeah, you're kind of like hoping to find some like lost gold or whatever, and you know, maybe re reignite a spark." But most of the guys they have now are like young dudes, where they found like, "Hey, you with some strami time can really cook," and they cooked, man. Like they're like you said, if we can have a full season of what they did for that, you know, two and a half months stretch to end the season and then into the playoffs, I'm I'm very excited with what this team can do this year. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, thoughts on the rest of the group? Yeah. I mean, just the fact that we're able to get these guys, like, this bullpen is completely different than we had last year to start the year. And even halfway, like, I think we we're discussing in the group chat just the fact that you know, when I've been rewatching these games, there's a lot of losses where D backs would be five zero and then Castro, uh, McGuff, whoever they had back there would give up the lead and the game, you know, they'd either end up losing or go to extras or whatever. And it's like those games were not fun to watch. And I know the offense struggled uh for a couple months there, but the pitching struggled too. And like we had Gallon and Kelly and that was it. And then the bullpen would come in even on their starts and blow it up. And then, you know, they just kept losing and losing and losing. But then getting these guys to just stabilize the bullpen. I mean, Ginkle was incredible. Seawald, Thompson, like the way they're just able to get out of jams that they worked themselves into, is, even in the postseason, like that's the most impressive part of it. Like none of these guys had ever been, maybe Seawald, I think, Right with Seattle, yeah, he was on the Mariners for their uh, their two and, and playoff Thompson, games last year. Thompson as well he had some <laughs> postseason experience, but you know it's not the same as going to the World Series. Um, but you know just the fact that they're able to keep their cool, like these are you for the first time I think in years we have our seven, eight guy and eight and nine guys. Yeah, you know it's like gallon go six innings. You got Thompson, Gingle, and then. Seawall to close it out. And I don't remember when was the last time I felt so sure about a team like that because even if Thompson can't get it done or Ginko can't get it done, we still have uh, Saul Frank right there to help him get out of the jam. Like, there's guys now. And I brought up also in the group chat the uh, Miguel Castro. We could have swept the Braves twice and he blew the game twice I in the being ninth. There for that Grand Slam. And Hopefully, see we won't do that. But just the fact that he, we have a guy who can go in there, shut it down, simple, you know, one, two, three inning. I, get, I, I really love that again, and might help put us over the uh, ninety plus wins column. And also, I just want to do some uh, some quick girl math, girl logic right now, and yeah. say that we save three million dollars. So that's an extra three million dollars we can add to that JD Martinez bank if we need it. So because you're speaking of girl math, I did this really quick because we're talking about, you know, payroll and all that of what we're projected. So did the looked it up. Uh, Spotrack has the payroll for the Dimebacks at a projected uh, $128,241,691. Uh, that is including Madbum with his $14 million and uh, Melanson with his $2 million. So that puts the D-backs active payroll, like players that are actually projected to be on the field playing at one twelve. With Erod the uh, making the most fourteen, Cattell at thirteen and a half, uh, Suarez at eleven point three, Yeah, 
Uh, Suarez at 11.3, uh, Seawalk at 10.9, and then obviously Gallon at 10.01, uh, basically. But so with the team payroll like 112, like I could definitely see and you know saving the three million there. That's nice. Like if they're trying to if they're talking about the the you know they're gonna have the most payroll team history. Do you think they're talking about just in general or like on field? Because we're talking about on field, that still gives them a good what 15, 20 million to add on to break that number, which at least obviously gives a sign that maybe it's going to be one of the top DHs and not, you know, kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel for Like if we're talking on the field and we got another 15, 20, that is JD and a number five starting pitcher to me. Cause I feel uh, we have our backup catcher now on the roster. I think it's Tucker Barnhart. Um, Mm -hmm. Just because looking back on it, um his connection with eduardo rodriguez i think is a major reason as to why he was signed to that minor league deal um he does get a a spring training um invite i just think that they would probably feel and to be honest if he wants to be um erod's uh, catcher for every start i'm completely fine with that because that gets gabby to start the other to do the other four and i think that would give him the one day off a week which is what i personally feel would make me the most comfortable um because he'd be around 120 maybe depending on how like if we have a long stretch of no off days maybe tucker goes like two days in a row or goes like two out of three um but like i really if gabby can stick at that 120 that 110 to 120 for me is going to be a big, a big thing. Um, One player in this group here that did avoid arbitration that if we get the 21 version and not the 20, no, the 22 version, not the 23 version, Joe Mantiply to add Mm. him to the back end of the bullpen would be huge. He had a rough 2023 season. 2023 was not, was not kind to him and it kind of sucks because he was amazing in 22 like he was the only bright spot in the bullpen in 2022 yeah. he was our so, only all-star you're all-star <laughs> didn't, um, didn't so, he fight through injuries this year too yeah so i thought he yeah. was yeah so that maybe that could have because i know especially for pitching like i don't remember exactly what it is but if it's like a lower back or kind of like a leg injury some of those can be like rough like really rough to you know like speed through and they take a, an actual while to basically like you know basically just actually rest. So hopefully an off season of that can help uh, ale whatever or help whatever he's uh, hurting with. And then comes back to, like you said, the 2022 man supply. Like for me, the back end, if, if we can have a combination of man supply, Thompson, Ginkle, Seawald, like that is a, that, that could be a deadly foursome there. Like if we had the lead up by two or three heading into the seventh, we could win a lot of games that like, like we can sh- like, instead of it being a nine inning game, it's a six inning game. Like that's that. I'm not saying that's what my expectation is. That's what I want. That's what I feel like the ceiling is. If they yeah. can do that. Um, and as Gabe brought it up, there were a lot of games, the bullpen blew early in the year. And then Gabe also brought it up in our group chat, mad bum and Zach Dave. We had, there's probably at least five to ten games that were lost because of, because of games that they started and it just blew up, just gave up way too many runs. Offense had no shot. So, like, you really didn't have a chance. So, without both of those guys, which, thank the Lord, um, we don't have them starting this upcoming season. Um, I definitely feel 90 wins might be possible. There's Unless the Dodgers, this whole thing does not work out whatsoever, and the Dodgers don't run away with the West, um, I think ninety wins is definitely possible. That's a that's a wild card spot for sure. I don't know if it's number one though, because I still feel like the Phillies on paper should be like they should be like ninety three to ninety five wins because they. They have two solid aces. I, I personally feel that their aces are unfortunately better than ours. Um, I think Nola and Wheeler 
are just a little bit better. Uh, they're more, especially in October. Wheeler is. He was insane. Wheeler's, he's not human in the month of he October. He made that contract the Phillies gave him look like a freaking steal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think he's has a, like two years left on that deal. So, so yeah. Uh, if he does it again this year, he's going to get paid. It might be by the Phillies. It might be by someone else. But I definitely feel with with these signings, I think we could, we can run it back for sure. And out of all the improvements that we've made this offseason, I don't see why not. Um, because we saw – we've seen what Torrey – what kind of a manager he is when he doesn't have a lot of toys to play with. And then – um, we then see what he does when he does have a lot of toys to play with. Like, he is a good manager. I know everyone likes to say that he's not good, and I was like, but y'all, you, there's only so he's had much growing can... pains. But like, I think he's he's the right manager for the team. Like, there's definitely been some decisions in the past, but it's also one of those where most of those decisions were bull the bullpen and like what bullpen did he have to work with. So it's not really his fault for a lot of it. Um, yeah, but I I'm so glad they did not fire him after that 21 season. Yeah, there. The only thing that I'm worried about, and I don't know if it's him or if it's Hazen, this obsession with Paven Smith. It's because it's Mike Hazen's first <sighs> draft pick he ever did. I don't think he wants to give up on it. But Paven, I'm fine if they want to put him on the 26 man roster. As a backup outfielder, backup first baseman, but he should not be getting consistent at bats unless he somehow had a crazy offseason yeah. and he improved one of his skill sets. Because I've always said Pavin's admitted everything. He's a average hitter for contact, average power hitter, average speed, average arm, average speed. Like he's just all of He's a good ball board. player, but. He's a good baseball player. He's just not exceptional at anything. He is okay. He's decent at everything. It's just he doesn't scare you. <laughs> like, yeah. like when he's not the best. Him... He's not in the best on at every position. There's a guy who's better than him. Exactly. And... Like he's not the best, but is he one of our 26 best players? Probably. He probably is one of our top 26 best players in the organization. Um, it's tough to say. Like, I still, I think the spring will be big for him. Like, yeah, if he, if he at least has a good spring, if he struggles any bit, then like, I'm sorry. Like, I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Like, if Paving could be like a good pinch hitter, like if he could consistently, like he gets the one pinch hit and he keeps getting hits. If he can hit like 260, 270 as a pinch hitter, then yes. That that is his thing that he can have, but I just don't see it. I just don't see it with Paven Smith. I am not a Paven Smith uh, fan, and I just think it's uh, it is Hazen not wanting to give up on his very first draft pick that he made with the team. But problem is he, no one's gonna trade for him. That's the problem. Like he is not tradable. Like what unless team would you, want him? Unless you basically be like, all right, here's the deal. You pay for our kegs for the stadium for half of the year. Okay? Okay. Shake hands. We're in agreement. It's on your way. So, yeah. Um, th uh, any parting thoughts we want to discuss on the pod today, fellas? No, I just hope we get a DH soon. Last, you know, kind of signing to, like like you said, DH, and then maybe, if, maybe a fifth starter or maybe just an extra bullpen piece, but I'd be okay with just a, a DH soon. Yeah, that is the one because Mike Hazen said he he wants a full time DH. He doesn't want a guy that he can place in the outfield that can also play. He wants a full time DH. And when you think professional designated hitter, you think JD Martinez. You do. Yeah. That's well, like that's what that, that's what standing ovation will get. Yeah, like I'm not against the idea. I just. The fact that he played for the Dodgers last year still has a bad taste in my mouth. Um, not not really um, a fan of it, but um, everyone, we yeah. do appreciate everyone for tuning in to our avoiding our arbitration uh, player signings here. Uh, very excited. We got all these guys back on the roster for 2024. Um, 
we're getting very we're getting ever so closer to pitchers and catchers uh reporting and then the best time of the year baseball season will be here uh make sure to like the video uh leave a comment as to how you feel on these players avoiding arbitration and if you have any strong thoughts on Pavin Smith, I would love to hear them. Um, so you can find all of our socials in the description box below. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We'll see you all for our next episode.